Discord. So you're Dark Sunshine's sister, huh? Yeah. I'm sure you can see the resemblance, though. I mean, not not really, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very. I'm not very habituated to looking at people. Um. So, does that mean that you are from the bright side of the sun? I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The way to like describe it. If you were going to compare yourself to a source of light, would you compare yourself more to sunlight or moonlight or starlight? Mm. I would say moonlight, but maybe that's like a biased decision just because I like the moon more. But How much time do you spend in... I guess self attending attending reflection. Like do you spend a lot of time thinking, How can I be more one with the universe or something like that? For sure, like I had a phase when I hit puberty where I was very spiritual. Um and now I also like to reflect, but I realize that I'm not the greatest at it. Sometimes it takes me like a few months to realize like for example during COVID Mm. I didn't feel too great. And then once everything opened up again, I kind of realized that I was a bit depressed during COVID, but I couldn't really pinpoint why I was feeling sad or like not normal, I guess. Oh, so it's because it the me. world is ending. <laughs> Just that. Hmm. No big deal. So, are you somebody who follows politics and news and stuff like that mm, not really it kind of like goes over my head because i feel like with politics you really have to get into it to understand what's going on and i don't really have the patience okay are you interested in media that you have to go out of your house to look at either like plays or like a movie in a movie theater or um, I guess like live band or something? I enjoy it when it's not like a hassle to go there. So if I don't have to plan too much to like enjoy it. Okay. Do you ever go to a museum to look at like paintings and stuff? Mm, I usually only do that if I have friends that enjoy doing it and they kind of drag me there. And then I'm like, yeah, I will join you. Have you done much traveling outside of Germany? Traveling? Mm. Also, yes, but usually only when people drag me along. Because okay. <laughs> I really hate planning, so I'd rather like just join someone. Okay, let's say you, you planned a trip and you visited, you had a two-week stay in Cairo, Egypt. Mm -hmm. Would you want to go look at all of the big Egyptian tourist things like the pyramids and the Sphinx or would you rather go to things that aren't that people don't normally go to to be more like the locals both I would say I would want to see like the famous sites just to like be able to have seen them once but I'm more interested in like the local stuff did you put together that chair yourself that you're sitting in? Mm, no, we bought it like that. It was already assembled? Yeah. And I also never really figured out what kind of like buttons and everything it has. Because I never got like the paper where they describe how the chair is built. So that's a bit annoying. Okay. I... We I just put together these two chairs for me and Rachel, like, two days ago. Was it difficult? Um, no, it was surprisingly easy, actually. It was mm -hmm. it was a really well-done set of instructions on how to put it together. Some things are smartly, are smartly put into a box in separate pieces so that you can easily put them mm -hmm. together. And some things are very dumbly put together like that. So mm -hmm. these were smartly put together like that. 
Unfortunately, we did have only the red, red choice of chair because they were on sale. What would you have preferred? What color? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to get one blue and one red because I'm a boy mm -hmm. and she's a girl, you know, but um, instead, because they were on sale, they only had red ones, so we both got red. <clears throat> The same for me. Mine is orange, and I only got it that way because it was also on sale. That's also why I got the last motorcycle I had. It was this weird color blue that nobody wanted, so it was like $1,500 cheaper than the black ones. <laughs> you could ignore it. You were like, whatever. It's fine. It was a very kind of like shiny teal. Like, it was very glossy teal. So, mm. it... um. It just had a little bit too much pop for most male motorcycle riders. Now, if it had been pink, I wonder if I would have gotten it. <laughs> Probably not. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, do you drive or do you take public transportation or walk? I prefer walking. I drive mm, quite a lot, but I prefer driving by myself. Because I can get a bit nervous driving, especially at the beginning. Um, and I don't want to be responsible for anyone else in the car if something happens. Because it's not always in your hands. Like, someone could be crazy on the street and hit you out of nowhere. Do you drive a German and... car? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. Are they uh, cheaper than foreign cars in Germany? Probably. I don't know. Like, our car, we got a second hand, so oh. I wouldn't know. Okay. Because in America, German cars are expensive, you know. They're like, if you want to get your fanciest kind of car, you end up getting it either, like, unless you're going to go for, like, a Lamborghini or something, you go for yeah. a German car. <laughs> mm. Um. Okay. So, do you cook for yourself, or do you eat out a lot, or tell me about your food preparation and consumption habits? Mm. I prefer eating out, but it's expensive. So I usually cook for myself and I don't enjoy it. So I usually have like two meals that I constantly eat for like half a year. And then I get so sick of it that then I like have to think about a new meal that I will incorporate. Is, it, is your go-to meal like bratwurst? <laughs> No. Sadly not. That would be easy to prepare. <laughs> or sauerkraut. Do you I actually right now in the Netherlands and they don't have any good sauerkraut. So oh, that's a bit sad. You're in the Netherlands. Yeah. Hmm. So have you do you live there in the Netherlands? Yeah, because I study here. Okay. Yeah. Do you have you become a fan of their soccer team? <laughs> no. Do you, do you like soccer at all? I mean, yeah. I But I wouldn't go out of my way watching it. Okay. You know? Uh -huh. uh, so, you eat a lot of the same thing. Is it... Do you get that thing because it's easy to make or because it's, like, comfort food? Like, it's... Like, for example, macaroni and cheese for me is... Something that's comfort food. I I liked it when I was a little kid. I still like it now. Um, they're usually quite easy to make. Not necessarily my comfort food, but just something that I found. It had like the same ingredients as maybe the other meal. So also like buying groceries would be very easy. Do you microwave stuff or do you cook it in the oven? I would rather not use any of those two options, but if I do, then the microwave. Because the thing is, maybe you don't know about this, but Dutch people have a thing that's like a mix of micro microwave and oven, and I still have not figured out how to use the oven part of it. <laughs> so I'm just like... <laughs> so in the other ones, they have combination microwave regular ovens? Yeah, it looks like a microwave, but you can also use it as an oven. Okay. Um, do you try to purchase food that doesn't go bad, like things in cans and frozen food, 
or do you if do you purchase things that are spoil spoilable but you eat them before they spoil or do you throw away food a lot Mm -hmm. I mostly buy fresh food so it spoils pretty easily and sometimes I do throw it away when I just don't want to eat it anymore Okay, so in general, fresh food is less convenient than, say, a can of beans or something. Uh, are, how much do you think about how long it's going to take you to prepare the thing you're buying at the market before you decide on buying it? As in, like, how much time would I have to spend cooking Yeah, with it? yeah, exactly. Like, like, for example, if you get raw beans, you have to cook those for many hours before they get soft. Usually what I buy is what I can just immediately, like, make eatable. Mm. <laughs> like a salad. I can just chop everything up. Do they, fun. Do, do they have Uncrustables in Europe? What Un is that? Uncrustables are frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That you can just eat straight out of the freezer. No. <laughs> Those are the most convenient of all foods. It would be very convenient, but no. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about your sleeping habits. How many hours of sleep do you think you need a night? And how many hours do you think you get on average? Mm -hmm. It's a bit wild. Because I realize that usually I feel the most comfortable when I have around like 9 or 10 hours. of sleep I'm okay with eight anything less and I get very like mm, uncomfortable okay what does it feel like physically if you you went to bed you for some reason you went to bed like at two in the morning and you have to get up at like seven in the morning so you only get like five hours of sleep what does it feel like physically like when I like wake up I would feel like I would like to cry because <laughs> I hate it so much. And then I just try to ignore it. And then I'm just a bit like groggy, but it's fine. But like the waking up is the, like the most horrible moment of that. Okay, let's say you have to be somewhere at 8 a.m. Would you prefer to get up at 6 a.m. and take your time getting ready but get less sleep or get up at 7 a.m. and have to hurry but get more sleep? I hate being in a rush, so I would wake up at 6 a.m. Okay. For sure. What kind of beverages do you consume in the morning? Like, most people have some kind of hot beverage they consume in the morning. Do you drink tea or coffee? Not really. In, like, when it's cold outside in wintertime, I would drink tea. But usually I just drink tap water and maybe, like, fresh juice that I made. Sometimes I make, like, fresh orange juice in the morning. Okay. How's the the tap water in the Netherlands? It's good. It's pretty good. Is is the Netherlands the place that's below sea level? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Like sometimes when you drive through like the countryside you see like random ponds of water and you're like, Why? Why is it there? Hmm. I wonder if the groundwater in the Netherlands gets brackish from the seawater. I haven't noticed anything, but usually I also like ignore those things. I just drink it because it's convenient and I don't like buying like plastic bottles. Okay. So do you drink it in a glass made out of glass? In my olive glasses oh, that are like your, half a your jar. Okay, cool. <laughs> So, did you recycle that? Did it used to have, like, pasta sauce in it or something? Yeah, I um, mm. I love olives. So, I buy, like, uh, olive glasses that are, like, mm, 935 grams. And then I just accumulate them because I eat so many. Yeah. Okay. I have the same problem with weed jars. I've got so many empty <laughs> jars that used to have weed in them. At some point, you have to throw some of them out. I do, so I do. periodically. I throw them away. But you hate to throw them away, right? You're like, but it's such a neat little jar. I know what you mean. <laughs> Surely I could put something in this. <laughs> and then for me, I usually have like 10 empty glasses just lying around. 
because I don't want to throw them out, but I have nothing to put in them. I prefer to get disposable cups, and I sometimes do, but then soon enough you run out of them, and then you have mm. to start using glasses again or go get more disposable cups. Okay, uh, so what are you studying in the Netherlands? Study psychology. Mm. That's cool. <laughs> Um, did you know about personality type before you started studying psychology or did you learn about it when you started studying psychology? A lot of them before, um, but I never really connected those two. It wasn't that I studied psychology because I knew about personality types or anything. Um, but the more I studied psychology, the more interesting I would find using personality types in therapy. Okay. So do you imagine yourself eventually going into the field where you're like doing talking to people kind of psychology or or yeah. <laughs> or research or something like or what what do you how do you see this turning into work eventually? Mm, I knew right away that I wanted to be a clinical psychologist. I would like work with patients. I find research very interesting, but I wouldn't feel inclined to do it because it's very exhausting for me. It doesn't come as easily as just talking to people. Okay. Do you think that if you are talking to people in a clinical capacity as a psychologist, um, do you think that the engine of success there comes from the fact that the people you're talking with haven't thought of the words that you tell them. Can you rephrase that? I don't understand. Well, like if I were to go see a psych psychologist or like when, when I got divorced from my second wife, we saw a marriage counselor. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't feel as though I was capable of being improved by the other person's words. In other words, they didn't say things that I hadn't already considered. Mm. Okay, can you phrase the question now? Because I kind of get what you mean now, but... Okay, so my, my question is this. Why does talking with people work as a psychology treatment? So I believe that certain kinds of therapists are better for like certain kind of people. Because for me, I like talking as in like, I would give encouragement and maybe guide the patient to some insights that they didn't get to by themselves. But for some also like behavioral therapy would be better where they just recondition themselves to like deal with life, I don't know. Okay, so if I employed you as a psychologist and I said, my problem is I have low self-esteem. <laughs> would you, what, what questions would you ask to clarify my psychology problem? Um, I would probably try to get to the root of why you think that way. And if it's really, hmm, if it's really something that you could change at all. Because looking at like personality types, sometimes I feel like things that I would believe are dysfunctional are just the way that they handle life. Okay. Can you give me an example of something that you see other people doing as a strategy that you find dysfunctional if you were to use it as a strategy? I don't know if this is like a great example, but that was something that I realized with a really good friend I have, she always said she's um, a certain personality type that I believe I am. But we got into many fights because she's way more argumentative when it comes to opinions, just for the fun of it. She just wants to like play out what kind of like counter arguments there are. I took that very personally until I realized that that's just the way that she likes to approach a conversation. Okay. So at first I was like dysfunctional. Why is she attacking me? And then I realized, oh no, she just wants to have fun and like play around with arguments. Okay. Do you think that 
what that at the end of World War II, that Japan would have surrendered sooner if the United States had nuked Tokyo, just Tokyo, instead of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If that would have done what? If that would have ended the war sooner. I don't know enough about that part of history. Like, I know a lot about Germans' part in it, but not really about Japan. So I don't, and also not about the U.S. So I guess things could have gotten so ugly then that the war would have ended sooner, but you never know how people retaliate if they have nothing else to lose. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, at the end of World War II, the U.S. firebombed the living shit out of Japan. Like, every one of their cities got the Dresden treatment, you know? And they just still didn't quit. They still didn't surrender. Until we nuked them. So, uh, what are you going to do about that? It's like, those, those Japanese people were nuts, man. They, like, when you, the yeah. Americans would come to their, their island, they'd be like, hey, we're here to, you know, take you over, but nicely. And they'd throw their children's like lives off of a cliff. And then just jump off themselves. Fuckers are crazy. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so did you not like history very much, or do you like history, or it, you just think it's kind of it's something you just had to study in school, and you, know, you don't really think about it after that? I liked history a lot. I also had it as kind of like an AP class. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. But in German schools, it's kind of repetitive what you learn. Because obviously it's about like what's important politically as well. So a lot of like World War II stuff. You know, it's funny. It's, the Japanese don't even mention World War II in their textbooks and mm -hmm. stuff. It goes straight from the end of the Meiji period to like 1955. Yeah. And they just skip everything in between. Yeah, they're silent about a lot of things they did in history. Kind of wild. but I mean, I feel like Japan isn't that popular so they don't have to talk about all of that because no one's on their shit then like no one's really thinking about what they're hiding or like not discussing but you know i will tell you the japanese japanese culture was very much impacted by their relationship with germany because if you watch their anime um every time they present europeans there's a overweighting towards presenting Germanic Europeans. Mm. And then... I'm, I'm actually surprised by that because also, like, moving to the Netherlands, Dutch people always say that, you know, they learn German in school and stuff like that, but in Germany, the Netherlands isn't really important at all. And no one really thinks about them. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Do they speak Dutch there? Yeah, in the Netherlands, yeah. Is it a lot like different not... than German? Is Dutch a lot different than German? See, this is something controversial. I don't know how Dutch people feel about this, but for myself and all of the Germans that I know, Dutch kind of seems like a young child that is trying to like write in German. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Netherlands people. You guys aren't doing it right. <laughs> Okay, so why didn't you take? Why didn't you go to college in Germany? Germany is really annoying when it comes to psychology because the entrance level of like the grades that you have to have are similar to um, medicine. So your GPA has to be perfect. And I also wanted to study in English, and kind of like just move further away from home and have like kind of like an international experience. Okay. Um, obviously, you speak English really well. Did you teach it to yourself, or did you learn it in school? Mm -hmm. I mean, English class in Germany is pretty great, because I had it since, like, my first grade. So I started learning English around when I was five. Um, I was never really that great at it. And once my grades in school for English kind of went down, I just started teaching it myself. So I just consumed a lot of media. Okay. Well, let's look into your media consumption habits a little bit more. When you mm -hmm. are consuming media that is not teaching you anything, 
It's just purely mm. for entertainment. What kind of media are you most likely to consent? Mm. Usually anything that like, mm, how do you say that? If the characters are written well, then I'm pretty much interested in anything. I don't like when it's gruesome. I like when it's a bit more like comedic or like, you know, like typical like rom-com stuff like that where I can just like analyze relationships. Okay. I love like the psychological aspect of like how people interact. Okay, let's say you had to choose between wizards, dragons, and swords and spaceships, ray guns, and, uh, and other planets. Which kind mm -hmm. of pretend worlds do you prefer? Science fiction or fantasy? Probably fantasy. Because I feel like certain archetypes are more represented. I really <laughs> like, the, like the the hero's journey. Mm. But so, is, is, are you talking about like the book by Joseph Campbell or something else? Or are you just talking about the concept of it? The concept. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that people are more are more examples of an archetype than they perceive themselves to be in general? I feel like most things have like two sides of the coin. So yeah, in this sense we're like all just representations of archetypes, but also they're more complex. Okay. What archetypes do you self-identify with? See, I don't know enough about them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like state anything, but um, for me, like, I really like the concept of um, having the right values. Because I also like, this is just a side story, I also do martial arts. So one thing is always how do you engage in a fight? And I really like when people just behave, you know, the right way. Okay. <laughs> so let's say you were doing couples therapy. Mm -hmm. And the couple came in and said, we need you to teach us how to argue better with each other so that we, we can resolve things rather than just yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. What's your advice? Mm. I mean, I would tell them that probably, like, no one is trying to be vicious. Um, and that I usually feel like hurt people hurt people. So if you feel like something, like someone did you wrong, then you kind of want to like stick it to them. So they probably just have to kind of also look back at how many grudges they hold. Okay. And then try to like have empathy for what the other person is actually like craving in that relationship. <clears throat> do you keep score in your own relationships? Like do you keep track of, of when somebody's done something annoying to you or whatever? For sure, especially if I don't get why they did it. Once I have understanding of what the reason was and I can accept that, then I can be very accept like just accepting of that side of the person. But if I don't understand it or if they just fucked up, then I can hold a grudge for sure. Okay. What time of day is it where you are? Time of day is now 7 p.m. Okay. Can you tell me about your day to day? starting with when you woke up as a sequence of insignificant events, such as I got up, mm -hmm. I brushed my teeth, I sat down at the table, blah, 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 like that. Okay, I woke up. I took a shower. Then I had breakfast. Then I read a paper for my class. Mm, what paper was that it? Hmm? What, what kind was, of paper? Yeah, what was the paper? That was a research paper on mentalization-based treatment and borderline personality disorder. Luckily, it was only five pages because I have to take notes. It takes forever. So that one was like 
bit quicker than usual. And then, yeah, I had lunch, read a bit more. And now I'm here, I guess. Okay. Do you know anybody in your life or have you met anybody or seen a relationship with somebody who has borderline personality disorder? I myself had many friends that were a bit more dysfunctional. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that my one friend had borderline, but she got di diagnosed with many things and it was very exhausting to be around her. Okay. Did the paper you re read say that you can't, you can't fix it? See, that was from like the mentalization based treatment. So they believe that you just have like fucked up core schemas. So once you like fix those, then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so silly. It's like. I mean, to be fair, the way they put it is always like, well, it's not like they disappear. You just don't activate them that much. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, the reason BPD people act like that is it links to the prime directive of all people, which is to uh, bring closer together expectations and realities. The problem with BPD mm -hmm. people is they were structurally... They, they, their structure was built on a foundation of distrust. So it's like they never can get over it. They, they're always going to expect you to betray them, and they'll always make that expectation a reality because otherwise they're violating the prime directive, which is I should be able to know in advance what's going to happen. <laughs> Do you think you're somebody who knows first, decides first, acts first or reacts first Go on. Oh, this came out. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I know first that's not really how I function maybe react I guess Okay, so are you somebody who who learns by do by just starting to do it, or do you do you figure out how you're going to do it first and then start it? Okay. No, I just start doing it, and then if nothing works that I tried out, then I actually have to look it up. But I hate looking things up. But what I usually do is I just ask other people to do it for me. That usually works. <laughs> okay. You hate looking things up. So can you think of an example of a time when you spent too long trying to figure out how to do something yourself before you ask somebody? Yeah. Usually anything tech related. I tried for hours and days. Um, and now that for like two years I have someone that's... Um, how do you say? Fixes your tech problems for you. Yeah, exactly. I just like messaged him and he's like, Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I can do that for you. <laughs> okay. Um, do you feel the same sort of relationship with physical tech, such as a little machine like a bicycle or a uh, vacuum cleaner? Like, do those kind of systems also stymie you, or do you find those easier to solve? They're usually easier to solve. So like when I try for like a few minutes or like an hour or something, usually I can fix it in a way. Usually it's not fixed properly, but it's fixed so I can use it. <laughs> so that's fine. Um, do you have any power tools? As in? Like a drill, a circular saw, um, a grinding disc, or like an angle grinder, or... Anything like that? Nothing too fancy. I have like a simple like tools kit from Ikea. That works well for me. Okay. So you probably don't use a lot of... You don't have a lot of opportunity to bust out your tools then, I guess. Because I don't... Mm -hmm. I can't imagine an Ikea tools kit being very full of good tools. No, it's like if I have to 
put a nail in the wall, then I can do that. Okay. All right. Um, can you think of a time from your childhood where you got in trouble and got yelled at and learned a very specific lesson from that? My example is when I got yelled at because I left my cereal bowl in the sink without rinsing it out. And Mm. the lesson was, if if you're not going to rinse out a bowl, fine. But don't do that to cereal because it gets cemented to the side of the bowl by the milk when it dries out. It's really hard to get off. I guess I didn't get yelled at, but my mom likes the kitchen to be clean. Or, like, in general, the house to be clean. So I got reprimanded a lot for, like, leaving stuff around. So the lesson that I learned is that I just try to clean up immediately. So when I use something, I just clean it right after. So was your childhood filled with your mother saying, Das ist verboten? (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Do Do you think the Netherlands is less, like, strict in Germany like that not really I feel like a lot of things are very similar okay. but also now I live, like in a shared house so I don't have anyone that's like supervising me in that sense a sad house you said no, a shared house oh a shared house no. okay <laughs> how many uh, roommates do you have I have three But they change pretty frequently, like every other month. So it's fun trying to type them. Because they're all different and you see a lot of their behavior. You get a lot of turnover in your housing? Okay. Is it because you're living with other students? Not necessarily, but it's usually people in their 20s. So maybe they stay for like a year or two. Or like just half a year. Because we also subrent our room sometimes. Okay. Um... Okay, so how long have you been living in the Netherlands? For two years now. Two years. Do you feel homesick at all? Not really. I also like rarely visit my family. Usually like once or twice a year. Do the Netherlands not have any mountains? No, not even really hills. Pretty flat. Does the flatness of the place bother you? Sometimes it's nice because where I lived in, like it uh, in Germany, it was usually like we had a lot of hills, so it's different when it's all flat. (coughs) (coughs) Well, I've noticed that because I grew up here in Los Angeles, the mountains are to the north of me, and whenever I go to a city where you can't see any mountains, I get very lost. I have no no nothing yeah. to look to see where which direction's which. No, well, that's true. I have no clue about like orientations here. Okay. Because there's not really any pinpoints, but Do you have to find do you find yourself like going to places you've not been before very often? Do you get lost when you do? Or you just ask your phone or what? I rarely get lost. I have a pretty good sense of direction. But I also use Google Maps a lot when I don't know a new place. I try to figure it out by, like, if I've been near that area. And that usually works out. But, yeah, no, I don't really get lost. Not really. Okay. Um, Have you ever heard the expression, it's from a Shakespeare play, Methinks thou protestest too much? I think, yeah, I understand, I think. Okay. Can you think of an example of a time when you saw somebody in your life doing that and you thought, okay, you're protesting too much. You must actually be responsible for this or something. Hmm. About an example? Usually I get the feeling when, like, for example, like a family member tells me that someone else is like rude or something to them, and I feel like maybe it's you know, but projected okay. onto them. Yeah. 
Do you, do you think people project a lot in general? Mm. Probably, yeah, in the sense that what I would value the most, I probably project a lot onto other people without noticing. And then only on the second look, I would be like, hmm, maybe they kind of see the world differently. Okay. Um, so let's play world mic power. You've got world mic power, which means you got the microphone for 30 seconds and whatever you say gets translated into every language and broadcast into everybody's ears. What advice mm -hmm. do you have for the world? I would probably say get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a time in your life when you didn't have your shit together and then a time after where you had gotten it together? I mean, there's various levels to it. I I feel like in general, I have my shit together. But also, now that I'm studying, I realize that how I function doesn't really fit the way I could optimally like study as a student. So my first year of uni, I like woke up at 7 a.m. every day. I hustled for like eight hours and then I just enjoyed the evening. For the second year, I haven't done any of that. So... I feel like I improved in a sense, like in the first year that I functioned optimally as like a student, but it took a lot out of me. So I feel like I, I should improve in things that come more naturally to me. And that has been going well. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Can you tell me, yeah. how, break? can you break down the step? Or can you break down the task of plucking your eyebrows? into exactly four steps four steps um get the tool plug your eyebrows clean the tool put it away <laughs> that okay yeah that's four steps <laughs> okay <laughs> um what do you think is more important as a value for you to uphold in the world you think it's more important for you to be kind or fair? Fair, definitely. How about fair or impactful? Then maybe impactful. Okay. If, uh, if you pretend you're working as a clinical psychologist, do you have, when you start a, start working with somebody, do you say to them, here's our success criterion. Here's, if we get, if we get to mia, then we'll know you're cured. Or do you, uh, do you say, well, this could go on for the rest of your life. We could be talking every, every week for the rest of your life. I mean, I wouldn't say that there's like a clear success story as in oh, we're doing a year of therapy then you're healed um it could take forever i feel like maybe then i wouldn't be very efficient as a like therapist but okay yeah. so but do you think then that if i were in therapy and every week i went to therapy it made me feel better for a little while that that even if it was something that had to be, I guess, reapplied every week, that it would still be worth doing, even if it never cured me, quote unquote. I mean, if there's improvement, for sure. Okay, but it's got to be overarching improvement in the person's self concept or something, not just feeling better for the rest of the day because I talked to you. Ah, uh, I know. Yeah, okay. Um,. It shouldn't be a short-term effect, as in like, oh, somebody listened to me today, so I feel great. It should be, I actually function better now, because I learned something, or I could change something. Okay. So, if my problem is, I can't seem to choose what I work on very well. Sometimes I work on things that are worth working on. And sometimes I waste many hours on a bad idea that never goes anywhere. 
What what mm-hmm. advice do you have for me? I mean, I would just say enjoy the process, but also it depends on what you want to achieve. If you want to be more efficient with your time, then maybe contemplate what projects you will work on more. But okay, I mean, let's say I took your advice very seriously. And then I began spending all my time just contemplating which projects I was going to work on. And I never did any of them. Would you then say, no, no, you listen to me too much? I mean, usually I'm not like trying to preach to other people. So I would have just like, well, that's on you if you do that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you're hired as a psychologist and that's your answer... Wow, I, I'm having emotional problems. Oh, that's on you, <laughs> motherfucker. That is on you, okay? I don't know why you're talking to me about it. <laughs> as, a, as a like therapist, I wouldn't try to tell people necessarily what to do different. Because I, I don't know what, what they like do wrong in their life. They're supposed to figure that out. I'm just there to like trying to guide them. I wouldn't tell them or oh, contemplate like all day what kind of project you will work on. So do you think that if you're engaging with somebody in talk therapy, they're talking themselves into the knowledge that they they take away from it? I mean, not necessarily. You also have to know that, obviously, I have no training as a therapist. All I'm learning is just bullshit at this point, because I'm still doing my best now. But I do believe that the therapy that I want to do isn't really about telling you like a game plan it's not like you know behavioral therapy where you actually tell them what to do what i would like to do is more like try to guide them to new insights obviously i would give hints but i wouldn't be like oh this is your problem you have to work better this way okay do you think that people can be positively influenced by negative reinforcement I mean, they can be conditioned, but if that's going to be a positive impact, I don't know. Do you mean like you would get punished? Yeah. So in other words, you've got a client who they are always running late and they want you to help them with this. And so they they encourage you to put a shock collar on them. And then every time they're late, you shock them. That would be fun, but also... I myself have done a study where I got electroshocks and I hated it. That was really stressful, but I got I got conditioned really well, but I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> so okay. I wouldn't do it. Okay. Um, let me ask you some TI questions now. Uh, if mm-hmm. all chairs have legs and some things that have legs can walk, is it necessarily the case that some chairs can walk? I mean, some, I would say. No. No? no. Okay. If, if all chairs have legs, which is true, hmm. and some things with legs can walk, which is also true, it is not a reason to conclude that some chairs can walk, because all the chairs which have legs may comprise none of the some things with legs that walk. Mm. Anyway, uh, how about this one? Can you tell me, today is Monday. Can you tell me what yesterday's, yesterday's, yesterday's tomorrow is? Saturday? Yeah. Can you tell me who my mother's, mother's, husband's only daughter is in relation to me? Grandma? No, it's your mom. <laughs> Who is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, can you tell me reasons why you might want to, somebody might, not necessarily you, might want to become mm-hmm. a hot air balloon operator? For the enjoyment of being high in the air. Or maybe it's like a 
family legacy, everyone has done that before. Or maybe mm, just being like an adrenaline junkie. Okay. Do you think a, a hot air balloon ride is a particularly adrenaline kind of activity? If you have fear of heights. Okay. Um, would you rather go hang gliding, hot air ballooning, or skydiving? Hot air ballooning, because I'm not good with too much excitement. It stresses me out. Okay. Uh, so you say you do martial arts, though. What kind of martial arts do you do? Like karate or something? <laughs> no. Um, so the things I've done and the things I've, I'm doing are, um, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I've did some MMA, doing kickboxing, boxing, Krav Maga. Um, well, have you thought about having any professional fights? I've never wanted to compete. I've been at a competition just to watch a few weeks ago. That was fun. So I might compete just for the fun of it, not really to like win any medals. Are you good at it? I'm not too bad, but I'm not like focused enough during training. I like to play around, but then you don't necessarily win. Are you more of a striker, a grappler, or a wrestler? Hmm. Probably more of like a grappler, but I like striking. I've been like practicing that more, so that's fun if you can actually hit someone. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rare to see in, in a fight on TV anyway for one of the fighters to get a really clean, just square, straight up square punch in the face. You know, they almost always partially block it in some way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Have you Is ever, good enough? Have you ever punched somebody like square in the face and knocked them out? With a knockout? I would never use that much force. Like, not, not in training. I have, like, landed some hooks and stuff. So I'm proud of that, but I never really use that much force. But that's also because of me, because I don't want to hurt anyone. So I'd rather, like, receive the punch <laughs> than punch someone else. Do you think that you'd feel differently if you were in an actual competition? Not necessarily. That's something I need to still like practice to not hold back that much. It's different with grappling because you don't really hurt someone else. It's not like a strike. So. Okay, but why would you want to do martial arts if you don't want to hurt anybody? So I can hurt someone if they do fuck with me. <laughs> but I don't want to. <laughs> See, because I would know that if someone would attack me, I would get traumatized anyway. So I'd rather like hurt them in the process as well. Right. Have you? Do you think it's likely somebody's gonna attack you? Not necessarily, but also like, I I do feel a mistrust to like men sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when I'm like out alone at night, because I do like to like walk a lot. So when I'm out at night and I walk home, I have music on. You never know what's gonna happen. Men do have penises. See, and they sometimes only think with that. That's true. Some of them, yeah. I've noticed uh, a lot of uh, people, both men and women, spend a lot of time thinking about sexual intercourse. Me, not so much. <laughs> I don't spend that much time thinking about it. But a lot of people do. Uh, can you talk to me about your relationship with task completion? Are you a procrastinator at all? I am a procrastinator. I kind of taught myself to just do tasks, but usually it only works if I have a list. But making the list is the hardest part, so I'm very reluctant about starting the whole process. If you have a list of things, then do you feel like you're required to complete it? Not necessarily. I sometimes make like new lists every day because I haven't started on doing anything. But it, but having a list makes it easier for me to just associate and start doing it. Okay. Uh, do you think it's more important for you to be 
reliable for other people or fair to other people? More fair. I'm not that reliable. That's something I have to work on. Okay. Do you think it's more important for you to be polite with other people or honest with other people? That's a bit more complicated. I'm, I would value being honest more, but I'm also like very conflict avoidant. So usually with certain people, I'm more polite just because I don't want the repercussions of being honest. Okay. How about when you were, I mean, let's say you've, you've said, you've met somebody and you've sat down and you've chatted with them for a while, a friend of a friend or whatever. Mm. And would you rather that, that person walk away from the conversation thinking about you, wow, she's so original, or wow, she's so relevant. What she says is so relevant. More original. Yeah. Okay. Um... How about relevant or uh, relevant or smooth? The relevant. I'm not that smooth. <laughs> okay. How do you feel emotionally right now? Content, I would say. Okay. And how about physically? Do you have any aches and pains? Stiff neck, something like that? Stiff shoulders, anything like that? My jaw is a bit tired, I guess. Have you been doing a, a lot tired. of chewing? No. Just in general sometimes. I get a headache from it. Um, yeah. What else? I'm, I'm fine. My hands are a bit cold. So do you think you clench your teeth a lot? Not really, no. No, but like my... How do you say... I guess my jaw is like a bit this position that's then when I open my mouth sometimes it like cracks a bit. I guess it's just okay. like <laughs> right. not not clear. No. Alright, cool. Um is this setup you're sitting in this red thing you're sitting in front of, is this a permanent setup you have or do you set it up for this yeah. conversation? Just for the conversation. But I was also washing my blanket, so it's just hanging there drawing. Oh, okay. So did you think I'll all kill two birds with one stone or did you wash it with the intent of hanging it behind you it's just convenient yeah <laughs> do you do a lot of video conferences no mm, i mean i'm more fine with it now because of covid and i had to do it a lot but i feel like it's always a bit it can be a bit awkward Okay. Do you play video games? No. I don't mind them, but I just don't. So what made you get a gamer chair? Just comfortable. Okay. <laughs> Did you try out chairs at the store for the most comfortable one before you bought one? Yeah. I tried them out. Okay. What do you think... Um, can you solve for me the problem of insolvent Southern European economies for the EU. Can you rephrase that? How should we deal with Greece? Uh, as in like they're bankrupt yeah. and how is that for Europe? Should we kick them out of the EU? Should we, yeah, yeah. What, what should we do? I mean, just giving them money isn't gonna help. We should try to, like, help them with the economy, make them more self-reliant. The only thing that they, know. they know how to do, really, is ancient <laughs> Greek philosophy. Well, maybe they need to have a comeback. I don't know. Hmm. Do you think the Greeks eat too many goats? 
that depends on the ratio of how many goats they have that they eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough around. Then maybe they can consume a lot. I don't know. Do you like to eat goats? I don't. I don't think did I ever eat a goat. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Doesn't sound normal to me <laughs> for like Germany. Okay. Um, do you have you ever read any philosophy? Germany's got various philosophers that are Wittgenstein or Heidegger or, or Nietzsche or somebody like that. I usually say clear of them. I had philosophy in school, and I got through like two or three years of it without reading any books. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I like what they talked about, but the way they write is too complicated. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's the weird thing about philosophy is they teach you all these classes in it, but if you if you get down to the, the, the meat of it, treat it as like debate warrants, a philosopher will have 50 pages explaining uh, like uh, something is made of like two basic warrants or something and you can summarize that real quickly but they like to mm. you know it's a lot of t-i-n-e shit and they just blah 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 blah, blah explain every little thing you don't even need, need all those explanations but okay um so what kind of class what class did you like most before you got to college in school, I really liked history. That was one of my best classes. I liked arts because I could do random shit and usually we weren't really supervised so I could do like a two-month project in a day and then just hang out. I liked my language classes as well. I had Spanish, English, a bit of Italian, Latin. Okay. Uh, do you have any creative outlets currently? Do you draw, paint, write, dance, sing, act, anything like that? Mm, I like to edit videos just for the fun of it. When I like a song and I have some nice visuals, I do that. Okay. Uh, how much do you listen to music that you already know you like versus how much do you check out new music trying to find stuff to like? Hmm. I would say like 90% new music and then like the two latest songs that I added. I listened to them for like a week or two and then new songs again. Okay. Uh... Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. So I'm going to can you tell me Different possible names for my invention. Okay, so I'm going to tell you an invention, but you're the marketing department. You need to come up with some possible snappy names to sell it as, okay? My new invention, it's a, uh, it's, it's this thing that attaches to your ears that, that goes up here like this, and it's got a mirror. So that wherever you are, you can, if it's sun, sunny out, you can turn and it'll cause a big blinding flash of light to go wherever you're pointing the mirror. So you can either use it to illuminate things or to blind people or, or just because, you know, you could, you could say, hey, you're taller than me. Why don't you look at yourself in this mirror? <laughs> My first idea was mind pointer because I was thinking of like a pointer you would use for a presentation to like show something far away. Hmm. Then. A <sighs> mirror that people can see themselves in? <laughs> Extra inch mirror? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And to attack people. I mean, that's also a funny one. Mind shooter. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to ask you to tell me the second half of this story. I'll tell you the first mm -hmm. half. You tell me the second half. Once upon a time, 
There were a brother and a sister named Gunter and Helga. Uh, Gunter was 10 years older than his little sister Helga. Gunter was 22 and Helga was only 12. So they didn't spend a whole lot of time together. But one day Gunter said, Helga, we need some sibling bonding. Let's go to Stuttgart where I will take you to the Underwater Gardens Museum, a place that's an aquarium, but only for plants. And I'm gonna pay the extra money that we have to pay for the swim with the plants experience. We'll get equipped with scuba gear, we'll go onto the aquarium, and we'll look at the plants up close. And Helga says, but Gunter, I don't like plants. They make me afraid that the sun will turn, that my, bo my body will begin turning sunlight into energy by a chlorophyll. And Gunter says, but you don't have any chlorophyll in you, Helga, because it's only for plants. And Helga says, exactly. Gunter at this point is confused, but they're already at the aquarium, and they've got their scuba gear, and they're about to go under the water. And he says, but Helga, I spent 400 euros on this. You should have told me before I paid for it. Now you finish the story. I would say that Helga very reluctantly joined him then, because she realizes that he wanted to have like a bonding experience. But Gunther would be very disappointed because he knows he, like she's not enjoying it. And then they do it, but it wasn't a fun day. Because they missed the point of bonding. And were they both terribly traumatized by their failed bonding attempt? I would I wouldn't say so. I would say that she like he's maybe annoyed, but she I feel like both would just be annoyed. Because what they wanted didn't happen. Okay. Can you give me synonyms for the word shy? Coy. Um. Shy. Hmm. See, I'm not great at English in that sense. Find synonyms. Bashful, is that a word? Yeah. Mm. Oh. It's a good synonym. I mean, the thing is, coming up with coy and bashful, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a lot better than most than most native English speakers, actually. Okay. Uh, those, those are not necessarily commonly used words, right? Most people don't, don't use coy and bashful very much. You guys are read a lot. Can they you? use weird words. Can you show me with your acting skills without any words? Bashful? That yeah, was okay. yeah, that's bashful. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's fucking gardeners. <sighs> okay, whoever invented the leaf blower? Oh, they're annoying. Somebody should hit them in the face. Can you use your martial arts to punch whoever invented the leaf blower in the face for me, please? I will do that through the spiritual realm for you. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. So, if, if you have a friend who likes to hang out a lot, which is to say they want to either call you up and talk on the phone for a long time with you or go to a coffee shop with you and just chat for a long time and there's no activity other than just chatting is that something that you enjoy doing, don't enjoy doing, find unproductive, think it's a good use of your time or something else? I enjoyed a lot. Most of my friendships are pretty much just talking friendships where we sit for like eight hours and we just talk but i also have other friends that i'm more active with where we like do sports or go on adventures 
Sonic both. Okay. Can you describe to me your process of going to sleep? For example, when I go to sleep, first I get into bed and I lie on my back for a bit. And I try to sort of like calm down. Then I start going like this. Right, 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 right. And then I lie on my side eventually and then I start pretending and then I go to sleep. My process. So I go into bed. Um... I would probably lay on my back and like listen to an audiobook nowadays. And then when I'm ready for sleep, I put my phone away. I roll to the side. I probably roll to another side and then I fall asleep. Okay. Do you ever fall asleep with the media still playing? Yeah. On like very low volume. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Does it being too bright or too or not quiet enough disrupt your sleep more one of those yeah it's either not dark enough or not quiet enough what's worse not dark enough okay <laughs> do you have a preferred temperature at which you sleep which the you set the heater out or whatever before you go to bed i sleep with my window open all year long, so sometimes in winter it's like minus five degrees. Is it is that because you don't sleep as well when it's hot? I can sleep when it's warm. Like when it's hot, it's gonna be rough. But I usually just adapt. I just want fresh air. That's my only requisite. Okay. Do, I'm you, okay. do you ever nap, or do you always get all your sleep during the nighttime? I rarely nap. Rarely. Okay. Um, would you call yourself a homebody? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay. Um, let's say somebody's going to, to invite you on some kind of an outing. You're going to be like, you know what? That sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to go. What kind of outing might it be? Hmm. Could be various things. Could just be to hang out and talk for hours. Could be to grab a drink. Um, could be to like drive to another city and just hike through the forest. Usually something more low key. If it's a party, then I have to like emotionally prepare, or like more like, yeah, prepare for like that. I will have to spend more energy. I guess. Okay, let's say you're in your psychology a psychology class you're taking, and the teacher says, "Oh my God, I have to go right now. I have to go give birth. I'm super super pregnant, and my water just broke." Hey, Dark Sunshine Sister, you come up all of a sudden out of nowhere. You come up here and teach the class. I got to go to the hospital. It depends how much I know about the subject, but probably I would just keep sitting and being like, no, not my job. Okay. So if you were at a comedy show and mm -hmm. the MC says, Hey, we're looking for somebody from the audience to come up here and just start making up some jokes. You, lady. And he hands you the mic and starts saying, come on up here and tell some jokes. Make us some random jokes. Are you going to be willing to do that at all? No. All right. Would you say you dislike being put on the spot in that fashion? Yeah, for sure. If you had time to prepare the jokes ahead of time, would you be more willing to do it? No. I did, I actually did poetry slam in school. And some of the people that did it, they would do kind of like a comedy show. I found that very impressive, but I could never do that myself because I don't feel like I have the skills to like make people laugh in that way. All right, so these are people who were, who were doing what exactly? They were doing like a school presentation or something? 
Yeah, that was like a class, and sometimes we had like like days where we would perform, I guess. What was it called? Performing? Poetry Slam. Oh, you Poetry Slam. Poetry Slam. Oh, I, I missed that part. I missed that part. Okay. So you didn't like to get up and do your read your poems? I mean, I liked the writing process more if I would read them out. I was very aware that for me, they were just like very cringy. Because they were more like, like prose, I guess. More like emotional or like they would paint a picture, not really funny. Okay, what do you think makes a good poem? Is that if, is funny? You think funny poems are better than not funny poems? Not really like that, but more like, I like when the audience is more engaged and that happened more when it was funny, in a sense. When it was more like painting a picture, everybody would just listen, but during your poem, there wouldn't be that much impact, you know? You wouldn't get a reaction out of the audience necessarily because they're just silent listening, even if they like it or not. It makes me want to, to take this class right now. <laughs> or get up there and just immediately start poetry slamming and go, is this open wound oozing too much pus? Check your body. Are you covered in sores? You are. All of you are making me sick. That, that would Dude. be my poem. <laughs> that have been most already. Uh, okay, so I I have to leave here about ten fifty five because I've got a lunch thing set up with my mom and at eleven thirty at the Cheesecake Factory. But um, we've got about eight minutes here before I gotta yeah. I gotta roll. Uh, I think I have a pretty good idea of what your type is, but let's see if I can eliminate any other possibilities here. Uh, what's precious to you? Hmm. What I'm interested in. So if I'm passionate about something, that's precious to me. Okay. What makes you more angry at yourself when you realize you've treated somebody unfairly or when you realize that you you were you accidentally hurt their feelings? And I treated them unfairly. Okay. Do you do you usually not accidentally hurt people's feelings or does that sometimes happen? I do. But I don't necessarily care too much about it because I feel like I can still fix it. Or, like, explain that I didn't mean it that way. Okay. Do you trust your experience more or your instincts more? Instincts. Can you tell me an example of a time when you had a plan to approach something, yeah, 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 but then mm -hmm. your instincts said, no, nah, you know what? Ditch that plan. Change change plans. And then can you tell me if afterwards you, you ended up saying, I'm glad I did that or regretted it? Ditch my plans. Mm, I don't know about situations where I actively ditched my plan. Usually just like, I had a plan, and maybe it unraveled or something else happened, and then, in retrospect, I'm like, I'm glad, because it actually wasn't what I wanted. Okay. Have you heard me tell the potato touch story before? No. All right. So, it's this is a story about a time when I had a plan and followed through on my plan because I failed to notice something that should have said, your plan's not, no longer a good idea because of this thing. So there was this restaurant I went to, and I noticed that when people got a meal, which came with baked potato, the waiters would touch the potato, both ends of the potato, with their fingers to push it open and then scoop butter in. And I thought to myself, if I ever get a meal, I'm going to keep an eagle eye out because I sat at the counter 
where you can see where they put the food down. And uh, I'm going to, if they touch my potato a lot, I'm going to cut those ends off and like push them to the side or something. <laughs> but uh, so I did order a meal and then I was watching, watching, watching. And then all of a sudden my plate came and I realized I had chosen rice pilaf instead of the baked potato. There was no reason to be watching to see if they touched my potato because I didn't get a potato. So that's an example of my my instincts or intuition failing to kick in and say, you don't need to keep an eye out for your potato anymore, Eric. You didn't get one. Can you think of a comparable example in your life or the opposite? Oh, God. <laughs> I like your example a lot, but I have no idea if I have anything comparable. Okay. Can you think of a time where you walked away from an engagement with somebody and thought, I wish I had said, yeah. Rarely. Rarely. Okay. Can you think of any instance of a time when you should have said something, but you did something instead? I said something and I should have done something instead. Or did mm. or did something but should have said something. So that could be it could be as simple as like, well I should have said that hurts my feelings, but instead I I broke his his favorite whatever. Broke something. Or vice versa. I should have just broke his shit, but instead I tried to convince him again to listen to me. I probably would do something instead of say something. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what type I think you are sooner than mm -hmm. I normally would. Uh, I, I like to take, I like to feel, I like these typing sessions to end when I feel like, okay, I've completely put to bed any doubts I have about it. Which I haven't really gotten to at this point with you, but unfortunately, I, I only gave myself a half hour cushion here. So, um, I think you're an I ISTJ, is what I think you are. Can you, can you tell me what you think you are? I very much believe that I'm an ENFP. Oh, you're not an ENFP. <laughs> no way now. I want to look up the function file, CJ. All right, because here's the thing. If you were an extroverted intuitor, then you wouldn't have the relationship you do with being put on the spot. You wouldn't, you, you would give me, you'd be a lot more disparate in your responses. If I were to finish telling the second half of that story that I started, there's no way in how it would have just been <laughs> it was like what like he just basically resolved the matter by right? well so she went along with it but then neither of them were happy at the end that's not an any dom and any dom would say well and then when they were under the water they realized there was a pirate's treasure chest there that was shooting out bubbles like from an aquarium except instead of being an aquarium bubbler it turns out that a recent shift in the seas had had made the sand go to the side and it uncovered an actual pirate's chest. Unfortunately, of course, it was cursed. And when Gunter opened it, he and his sister switched bodies. Now Gunter was a 12-year-old girl and Helga, the 22-year-old man. Whatever will they do? Find out next week on the continuing adventures of Helga and Gunter. So the point is, people who are any doms like the opportunity to make up random shit and you don't. I actually I would like to talk to you one more time, like another day. Okay. Because I don't agree, but it's really interesting to like see why you came to the conclusion. Okay. Yeah, we can talk again, sure. Uh, but yeah, I have to wrap this up. We're gonna stop recording. Do you want me to share this with you privately, or are you comfortable with me publishing? Yeah, you can publish. All right, sure. All right cool. I'll publish it.